The top 10 disappointing NBA players. Kelly Oubre Jr. is not coming close to replacing Klay Thompson. The Celtics are 1 in 5 with Kemba Walker in the lineup. This video's ranking is based off how much each player's failing to live up to expectations so far, so stay tuned to find out the talent that's been most underwhelming at number 1. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to DFlow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, welcome aboard. Please subscribe and hit notifications so you're updated every time I post content. Now let's get into this. Number 10, Russell Westbrook. Before he dropped 41 against the Nets and 26 against the Hawks in Westbrook's nine games played, he'd recorded more shot attempts than points. A high volume of deep contested mid-range shots like these aren't going to cut it in the modern NBA. And shockingly, Russ is making just 16% of these shots from 10 to 16 feet. He has improved his three-point shot in comparison to last year with Houston, but his overall field goal percentage has dropped off, and he's turning the ball over at the second highest rate of his career. Whether you think he's overhated or overrated, there's no denying that the former MVP is a fairly big reason for the Wizards being dead last in the East. Another player that's contributing to Washington's 4-12 record is coming up later on. Number 9, Pascal Siakam. The numbers for Pascal are still above average, and he's been much better recently. In his last two games against the Kings and Magic, he's dropped 62 points combined. But generally, through the first quarter of this season, Siakam's production is nowhere near where it should be. Pascal's taking four three-pointers per game. That's two less than he took last year, but he's only making a quarter of those deep-range shots. But it's not Siakam's stats that have made him disappointing this year. It's how he's froze under pressure and, for the most part, hasn't looked comfortable as Toronto's number one option. Pascal's been suspended by the Raptors for leaving the bench after fouling out, he's missed back-to-back -back game winners, and his post-up game is completely underdeveloped. I've said it in past videos, but Hakeem Olajuwon is someone Pascal desperately needs to visit because he has no go-to offensive move in his bag, while Siakam's athleticism and Beyblade spins get him 30 against a weak defense, elite teams who have reputable defenders are going to shut him down, so it's time for Pascal to go back to the drawing board and figure out which aspect of his offensive game he's most committed to developing. But what's been exposed about Siakam is that he doesn't have that signature offensive weapon. Number 9, Ben Simmons. Obviously, he still can't throw a fish in the ocean from behind the three-point line, which hurts the Sixers' spacing, but Simmons' dominant slashing had always made up for that in the past. His confidence attacking the rim both in transition and in the half court is what made him a two-time All-Star and an All-NBA player. Unfortunately, in 2021, Ben's confidence has fallen off as the Aussie is averaging both the lowest point total and field goal percentage of his four years in the league. He's still shooting 64% from the free throw line, which sadly is a career best. I know he's doing a good job of getting Harris going, but if Philadelphia wants to make the finals, the LeBron-like top slashing version of the locomotive Ben Simmons has to return. Number 7, Lonzo Ball. After he dropped 27 in a win against the Bucks, it was back to typical 2021 Lonzo the next game, a 7-point showing against the Rockets where the 4th-year guard made just one of his 6 3-point attempts. 2017's number 2 pick was expected to reverse his status as a bust in his second season with the Pelicans after he'd set career highs in points and 3-point efficiency in 2019-20. But this year, Lonzo's shooting the second worst percentage of his career from both the field and from deep range. Zoe's been outshined by his younger brother Melo, who's the clear rookie of the year favorite. And even though Lonzo's a good perimeter defender, his struggles are one of the main reasons for the Pelicans being 14th in the West right now. Number 6, Aaron Gordon. Orlando's forward has thrown a cheap shot at my hometown point guard Kyle Lowry after their beef in the NBA bubble that was his so-called revenge, and Aaron's also put up a career low in free throw percentage, a career high in turnovers, and last week Gordon failed to crack double digits in points in back-to-back -back games. Over his last 10 outings, Aaron's shooting under 40% from the field, and his teams plummeted in the standings because of that. The Magic are 2-8 in that span of games, and the fact that Gordon's numbers have steadily decreased since 2017-18 is a big concern for Orlando's organization. Number 5, Robert Covington. 
The Trailblazers expected to get an elite 3 and D role player when they traded the number 16 pick in the 2020 draft and a protected first round selection in the 2021 draft to receive Robert Covington from the Houston Rockets. Cove was coming off a playoff run with Houston where he averaged two and a half steals per game and was very efficient shooting the ball. But Covington has been the opposite of efficient this year as he's shooting just over 30% from the field and just under 30% from distance, both of which are the lowest of his 10-year career by far. Also, Covington was supposed to help out the Blazers' defense on the wing, but they're 29th in defensive efficiency. So far, the deal to receive Robert is looking like a waste of draft picks for Portland's front office. Number 4, Davis Bertans. On November 21st, 2020, the Wizards re-signed their stretch big to a hefty, even surprising at the time, five-year, $80 million contract, and Bertans has utterly failed to live up to his current $15 million cap hit. He hasn't been a good floor spacer for Beal and Westbrook. I guess this just proves that sometimes a player's focus falls off once they cash in, because Bertans' field goal and three-point percentage have both been career lows and gone down by 10% respectively. Number three, Blake Griffin. He still dunked the ball zero times this season, and as sad as it is to say, given the legendary athlete he once was, Blake Griffin's NBA career could be over pretty soon. A lengthy injury history consisting of knee injuries one after another has ruined the big man's career, and I really feel for him. However, even though his athleticism has been falling off for the last few years, his jump shot was able to make up for that in the past, but not this year as Blake's shooting 22% from 10 to 16 feet, and his 12 and a half points are the lowest of his 11 years in the league. Number two, Kelly Oubre Jr. Oubre missed 17 straight threes to begin this year, and is making under a quarter of his three-point attempts with his new team in the Bay Area. Considering how Steph's gone off, Kelly's struggling to even somewhat mimic the production of the injured Klay Thompson becomes that much more disappointing. Kelly's release and general form on his jumper make it seem like the shots are falling through, so to me, this is a purely confidence issue. No matter how much time a player puts in, without a lack of belief in his abilities, the practice doesn't mean anything. Oubre Jr. had much better body language in Phoenix last year and seemed to be having fun. He was the Suns' second leading scorer, and the Warriors traded for him because of that but Kelly's posted his lowest scoring average in five years at only 12 points per game. Number one, Kemba Walker. Saturday night primetime ABC games, the no fan environment or not, provide a playoff type feel to an NBA game. And that was the case when the Lakers and Celtics matched up this weekend. And usually the former UConn Husky is built for the moment. Kemba was an absolute killer in college and his playoff career in the pros, albeit just two appearances, has been pretty solid. So it's been shocking that against LA and in the six games Kemba's played after his left knee injury for the contending, or at least looked to be contending Celtics, Walker hasn't been himself this year to say the least. Kemba's patented speed off the dribble looks slower than it's ever been, and the four-time All-Star is missing shots he typically makes look easy from every area. He finished 1-for-12 in the game against the Lakers and missed the game winner. Given who Kemba has next to him in two young phenoms in Tatum and Brown, Walker needs to be letting the game come to him and not be taking 14 shots per game away from them. But who's disappointed you the most this year? Let me know in the comment section and I'll reply to your comment. Actually, I'll reply to every comment, but this was DFlow. You're the best for sticking around and I'll see you next video.